Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, or you can call me Mike if you like. Um, and welcome as well to day 10 of the Mastering George and S series. It's been 10 weeks. I should call it week 10. For some reason, I'm into this day 10 thing. Just indulge me. Just indulge me. Anyway, 10 weeks, that's that's a significant amount of time and uh, uh, the great news I have some great news for you um, uh, a massive supporter of the channel has sent me the catalog resume of Georgia Ness so going forward I will have really complete information about every painting that we're doing a study after and I'll be able to impart that to you um, in the videos and also in the corresponding blog post. Now I should point out in the corresponding blog post, uh, you got a um, you've got the reference image that I used, and uh, this one's pretty interesting. And we'll get into that in one second. Um, uh, also in the uh, I should point out in the members area, you'll see the reference there up on screen, and me talking about. Um, Oh, challenges I think uh, are going to be upcoming with the painting, things I like or don't like. Um, uh, and then in the master, uh, in the uh, members area, masters area, yeah, same thing, man, same thing. Um, you also get to um, see my color mixing session, which was pretty good on this one, fairly extensive. So I basically break the painting into what I think are the most important con constituent colors and um, give you some insight into those mixes so um, that's pretty valuable and uh, <laughs> this painting is a uh, over four hours long and sadly at the very end the camera crapped out so um, there's probably a missing 15 minutes or so um, but m most of the challenges and most of the work in the painting had been accomplished it was basically just uh, finishing up um, didn't get recorded but I did at the very end of the video you'll see a couple uh, scenes actually I've doubled it up just showing you what the actual final painting looks like and then of course uh, you have the image um, that uh, shows you what video you're watching and on the blog post there'll be a pretty good image of the painting there um, so we'll be getting into the catalog resume um, uh, here and then I think Hopefully, also, we'll be getting into the history of American tonalism and reading a little biographical information on Ines. But prior to doing that, I want to talk about this painting. Um, interestingly, his painting is a 10 by 14. It's a 10 by 14 and 5 sixteenths, or, and it's 10 and 1 sixteenth by 14 and 5 sixteenth. It's very close. So is mine. And... Um, I didn't know that. I just knew that uh, I, it worked very well for 10 by 14. So far, it's the largest I've done in the series. And uh, of course, the whole time I'm painting it, I'm thinking that his is actually much bigger. But um, there's some little figures in there, which I did, a, in a, uh, let's say, a, an abstract impressionist take on. I didn't work on work on them too hard. Um, but um, by the end of this painting, I found it uh, very, very difficult. And uh, you see us starting in now. Now, I did my drawing stage with a uh, mix, special mixture of uh, Mike's Umber, which is uh, brown ochre, raw umber, and black. And I used that so that it dries very quickly. I did that one day, and then I went in to do the color session the next day. Uh, which is, of course, the bulk of the time in the painting. Um, the interesting thing about this, and uh, I cover this in the live, of course, in the uh, members area, um, is, you know, I, in my time as a painter, I've had quite a few students, and they're always, uh, one thing I always hear is like, oh, I can't paint waves. Oh, I can't paint faces. And I always have the same answer. I say, it's all just shapes. You just paint the shapes. You can paint anything. Well, and as the shapes, especially in the sky, were quite indistinct. And I found I had some challenges in the drawing and underpainting stage, too. It really took me a bit longer than I thought it was going to. And this is one of the reasons I blame the camera sort of uh, failing on me. Uh, it doesn't tell me with certain SD cards when the card is full. Um, anyway, it was a real challenge, but I'm quite proud of it. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that you'll see versions of this uh, scene online that are purple and yellow off the chart 
um, in the process of researching for this video, um, and this will be mentioned in the catalog resume, um, there's an image of this in the book of uh, George Ness and in the, in the, in the Visionary Landscape, um, which really helped me identify it because in the name of the painting is Sunset, and George uh, was really very fond of that title. There was about maybe 30 or 40 paintings with the title Sunset. It was a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack, especially with this um, catalog being so new to me. Anyway, let's read just a little bit from the catalog, and then hopefully we'll get into some um, of the history of the chap chapter on George from the history of American tonalism. Okay? Now, um, just for you uh, people that are completists, it's called Sunset. It was painted in 1860. Um, it's signed on um, the lower left. It's currently in a private collection. Lucky guy or gal. Um, there's a description, but we're going to skip that. Um, uh, the artist, uh, the painting was, ten, like I said, 10, uh, 10 and 1 16th by 14 and a 5 16 which is really incredible because that'll be the closest to an original size I've ever painted a Georgian S study. Hmm. Comment. We're on page 204. Oh, I should give you the catalog number two. Why not? It is catalog number 166. Okay. And we're on page 204. The view of the Delaware Water Gap has different vantage point has a different vantage point from the others. Several of its elements, including the broad sloping foreground, the bend in the river with the dense trees at the bend, and the steep mountain on the right, are mentioned in the description of Vanessa's lost masterpiece, The Sign of Promise. It's gone. 1862. It has a catalog number 203 which also described uh, as a, some of these images are black and white so that could be why I mean all these, these images most all these images are in the catalog black and white um, but in some cases they may have gone from very old photos just so it was a complete catalog so it's very interesting and we're going to learn a lot about an S and this catalog as we proceed through the project and big big thanks to um, the awesome supporter of the channel that donated this. It's not an inexpensive book, so it's quite a generous uh, donation of the cause, and uh, we're all benefiting from that, so um, send him some love and prayers. Anyway, carrying on. This small painting is not a field sketch, however, because its technique is that of a finished multi-stage studio painting. It is undated, but it comfortably fits among the carefully painted sunsets of about 1859 to 1860. The somewhat sketchy foreground and the transforming light effect, though, suggests a date in 1860 soon after Anessa's move to Medfield. Despite the sketchiness, the overall effect is one of precision and complete detail. Let me, if I can interject for a minute here. So yeah, that was the last bit I painted, and I could see it was very loose and very sketchy, and I was really glad because I was getting tired. There's a lot of precision in that sky. The sky we're painting is one of the most challenging skies I have ever painted. Um, I'm very proud of what I pulled off, and the reason it was so difficult is it's uh, first of all it's just it's a um, a symphony of complementary color mixing is what I'll, I'll say, and of course we get into that extensively in the members area as well as the struggle, and it was a struggle, um, and, and a good struggle. It definitely is. Um, um, going to help improve my work, no question about it. And hopefully we'll have a little time at the end of the video to talk about that too. Let's see. Um, so the, when it got a little sketchy on the bottom, I was like, oh good, yeah, I could see it was sketchy. Uh, ba -ba -bum. With everything bathed in sun the sunset glow, the forms are carefully balanced between their local colors of blue, gray, or muted green, and the colors of the light, mostly orange with some red. In the finely painted distance sections, it's hard to distinguish the sequence of the colors, and it is ah, so hard, but very rewarding, yes. Um, so, like I said, this is a really good picture of this. If you don't have George Ness and the Visionary Landscape, go buy that book. It's a great book. And um, 
there's a nice reproduction of that which is far more golden tone and one thing I'm learning with all this NS researching is you can't um, and as I discussed with uh, my friend who sent me this book these, these wonderful books you can you can't really know um, the actual colors of a painting unless you're really viewing the painting in, in real life and even then differences in the lighting conditions how long it's been stored in the dark all of these things become a really big factor yeah so let's move on real quick just real quick I want to move into a history of American tonalism and uh, just pick up where we left off just to keep some momentum going there I know some of you are following the tale yeah uh, anyway, we're on page 44, and, uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay, you're talking about the uh, post-Civil War era and how people were just wanting to chill out and look at some nice, relaxing rural art. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, oh, and that's a stay. Perfect. And that's a stay in Medfield between 1860 and 1863 along with fresh subject matter and the fraught emotional climate of the Civil War years, engendered a new expressive painterly quality in his work. As historian Michael Quick has written, the Medfield style is a con consciousness of brushwork based upon the practice of direct painting, the blending of color into color, wet into wet on the canvas, in decisive clef clever brush strokes, in a manner that became appealing to general tastes in New York only after 1878. So he had 18 years of long, hard struggle in New York. Um, they were into this uh, Hudson River thing, which is, you know, a different approach to painting than Ines was doing. Yeah. Um, painted with lush bravura in Medfield. Oh, he's talking about a painting. Uh, we're going to skip that. It's called Clearing Up, and that's probably when I'm... I, I don't really like the clouds in that, so I won't be making a study of that. Um, let's see, we, we've jumped down. The Medfield pictures were well received in Boston, although they occasioned consternation and dismissal in New York. It is this expressive quality and deep suggestiveness and later subtle modulations of tone that sets Ness apart from his Hudson River contemporaries and constitutes his fundamental contribution to the toneless movement. In a Boston Review of 1862, Boston, Ines's great sprawling mark, they, they, they said in this review, great sprawling marks of brush every which way all over the canvas, and his great coils and lumps of paint were contrasted with the smooth finish and polished truth to nature of the Hudson River School. In Boston's eyes, there was no comparison, because this stuff, you know, you can't, I'm not going to knock the Hudson River guys, their accomplishment is stellar. But this is more artistic, more poetic. And the color in this painting is off the chart. Now, um, I should point out in the visionary landscape, the whole thing has an overall more golden tone. And then again, some copies of this scene I've seen online were just gold and purple, which looks really cool. I saved a few just because I was thinking, well, I'd like to paint that gold and purple version. Um, but uh, I don't know what's up with that. That could even have been some problem with like a film emulsion or something back in the day. Don't know. Um, anyway, it's it's what's what's actually really cool is that um, if the uh, SD card was going to you know give up, um, it gave up on that loose sketchy foreground. You know, there's that sky is really the point of the painting, and I'm very proud of what I pulled off there. Um, the challenge, of course, getting the blues and the oranges and everything to work. And to have a loose freshness, that's the thing, a fresh, a fresh approach. Um, while it looks fairly faithful to George's work, that is a bit different than I have to do with my own stuff. And uh, that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. We have a minute left. Um, so today in the studio, I was working on a painting. And I have to say, it's a bit of reference I've had prepared for a long time. But every time I look at it, I see these compositional issues. And uh, what I have to say is that I um, solved all those very, very well today, and I put that down directly to the Ines studies, because one of the reasons I'm going after um, the, the, these paintings is to just get better and better at um, composition, and not to mention color, because Ines had it all. He was brilliant at composition. He was brilliant at color. Yeah, so this is the bit where you see the finished painting, and that's just real time. Um, 
Yeah, and hopefully you're digging it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. Go check this out on the, my blog. This will be for sale in my store. Price on this one's 450. Just too much effort. I can't uh, can't do any better than that. But um, go check it out. And uh, thank you so much for uh, making it this far into the video. And we have some amazing, amazing Ines studies to come up. And um, by the way, all this biographical information, not the not from the history of American tourism, but about the painting, will be in the blog post. Um, so if you feel like going after your own study, you, the tools are there. Especially say, if you traipse on into the members area, and then you got, yeah, you know, I mean, you could almost match me stroke for stroke. Not that I'd recommend that. Don't do that, but you could if you wanted. Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Try and be patient when people have views that differ from your own. And um, take good care. Stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family.